All right, Jay here. We have another tire change video for you. Can't be too many of those, right? Well, anyway, rear tire change video. This is an 18 inch rear wheel. We're gonna give you some tips the Dunlop way right now. Okay, so one of the things I find is the most important tool you'll have is your stand. You wanna have a good stand, not be on the ground or on a bucket, but on a good stand. So this is really important. Uh, this is one we made years ago. We have a couple different versions of this. I had a really good follower of ours who drew this up and I have a, if you email me, I'll send you the drawings to this and a link to a video that, that talks about how to make the stand. And so if you have a welder buddy, the reason we don't sell these stands is we feel like it's going to be too costly uh, long term, you know, with the shipping costs and so forth. To make them heavy duty like they are, they're like 30 plus pounds, to make them heavy duty, it's going to be a little too expensive. So most people know a buddy, a brother-in-law, uncle that welds or at their local shop whatever they can get it welded up high school you know machine shop so what we're gonna do next is let's show you the tools we use let's start with tire paste hunter engineering makes a good tire paste so does euro paste you can find that one online this one's a little harder to find going through a rep pro buds has a decent uh, tire paste as well they're in the moto industry guy rides and i got some of that in here as well you'll see it right there though this little bit whiter stuff we use a sponge out of the kitchen so that's there a valve stem tool like this you can get it like at Napa or online. Uh, this helps a lot. They call it a, a valve core pull tool, pull, P-U-L-L, -L, pull tool because they, they use it to pull. That's nice because you can grab it. They're only like seven or eight dollars. You want a couple of wrenches when you're doing your, um, for your uh, rim lock. Uh, this one, th in this case, it's a 10 millimeter, so we won't need the, the 12 right now on this wheel. You want to have three spoons is nice. If you can have at least three good spoons, Motion Pro, and Motion Pro B Buddy, you'll need an air chuck and a good, you know, good air source. It's nice to have a good compressor so you can fill it up quickly when you're beating up the tire. Okay, so we're going to start. I like to take off the nut and cap straight away. Take both of those off, and then I'm going to get in here and take off the whole valve core. Oh, and you see, I have gloves on. I I think this job needs to be done with gloves on. See that core? Take that out. Okay, now this tire looks just ruined, right, Rado? Yeah, it looks terrible. But r believe it or not, this will work. I'll put the hours on it. It, it. This tire would still work really well because it's a gummy 81EX on fire roads and stuff. We would still right. run this on our dual sport bikes and on all the fire roads, it works great. So these things work really well a long time. So I back off the nut to where it's just, uh, it'll almost, it'll fall off and I put it back on like two threads, you know. For, for the rim lock. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna start just a little ways away from the rim lock. To knock the tire off the bead, I'm gonna push down with my left hand, just like that. And I'm gonna do that all the way around the tire. And now we're all the way off. And, and doing an 18 inch, it is easier than a 19 inch rear, which I have video showing as well. So um, it just turns out that I have more 18s to do right now. So rim lock. I'm going to move over here just a little ways away and knock it off the bead like this. Same thing. So now all the way off the bead on both sides. That's the first key. And now I'm on the, I got my disc side up because I started with the rotor side and the sprocket side up. So I started with the sprocket side up. So now I'm here as I'm going to do my first bite. I'm about a third or fourth of the way away from the rim lock. And I'm going to take that first bite. And you can see these spoons have a lip to them that's really nice. That lip is going to pop right in and just go in like, like that. Like that. Boom. I'm just switching between the two. And my bites are about two and a half inches apart or so. My left hand is holding the tire down so I can get in here. And you see you don't have to go in very far. And I'm trying to go slow here. Boom. Okay, we're all off, and we're gonna flip it over. Now, at this point, a lot of guys would pull out the tube. They're used to doing it old school. We don't pull the tube out because it just saves your hands and it saves a whole step. If you get that first side off without puncturing the tube, you're not gonna do it on this side. So now I got that first one in, and I have my body pushing against this. Now my feet are on my tire stand. Um, some guys make the tire stand without feet. I go, man, you got to have the feet on there. Let's 
So those feet really help out. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another bite right here. And I'm just taking these bites about two and a half, three inches apart. And I push my body against here, and I have a big gap over here now. Now I know that the tire can come off. Got my tube out of the way, and I can just push it down. And just pop right off just like that. Now we have a neat treat in here for you. What's going on in here, Rado? Oh, double tube in. Bubble, double doubles. So we got double tubes. Like in and out, double, double. Double, double. So we'll talk about that here in a second. So I think what we're gonna do first is powder up this, powder up this, this tire, the inside. Now the reason we powdered, I, I didn't, I don't know if I always mention this in my videos, but the reason, the reason we powder the inside of the tire so the tube and the tire don't kind of bond together and wear apart. It'll, it'll, it'll actually, it'll wear the tube into little balls and so forth. Now, so you're gonna like this. So we put this, now this is a D803 GP trials tire. A lot of guys are like, it's a trials tire. Why in the world are you putting that on a, motor, on a dirt bike? And they work really well in really tough, dry, rocky terrain. They work really well. Really gummy. And you can see it's not a very tall knob. So it can, it can uh, pack up in really slimy mud or in snow. I know it doesn't like snow because we get in the snow in the wintertime. It'll pack up with snow. So that's not a good, but everywhere else it does pretty dang good. Even in the sand, it does really good. Okay, so now what I got here, and this is, this one I think has been together a while. So we're actually gonna tear this apart. You can see how it's kind of stuck. I'm gonna put a little bit of powder on this as well. Make, it's gonna make a big old mess here, but we're gonna, we're usually doing this outside. Okay. Smells like babies in here. Yes. Rado's <laughs> at home. <laughs> He's like, yes. Smells just like home in Jay's garage. <laughs> so Jay's house doesn't smell like babies very much. Now it's just when the grandbabies come. Right. Can you believe that? I, people go, you're not old enough for grandbabies. Yeah. Terrible, huh? Yep. How many do you have? Two? Three. Three? Oh, nice. <laughs> More to come. More to come. I'll, probably, I'll have more grandbabies than you have kids here soon, I bet. Yep, now we are even. Okay, so I got the tube back in here, and that's going to keep, I got that powder on there, that's going to keep this tube and the inner, inner one from binding up. Guys are like, why would you double tube a tire? Well, this is lighter than running a moose or a, a, other systems we could run, and we had a punctured tube anyway. We didn't just cut this tube just because. So if we have a punctured tube, uh, then and we'll a lot of times we'll say that uh, we usually use a stock one. This is another heavy tube. Putting the core back in, and with the core we're gonna air it up. Just gonna get a little bit of something there, and actually I'm kind of gonna let a little bit more out since we're double tubed. It's gonna be a little harder to to feed into our tire. Okay, so at this point right here, I'm gonna just lift the tire and just feed it in just like that. Woo. Okay, so we are all the way in. And I got just the right amount of air in there, so we're good. So now we're gonna put tire paste on the tire. And you wanna have a good tire paste like this. Don't use a W40 or anything like that because it stays too wet, won't seat, can fall off. Good tire paste like this is just a real good help. All the way around, and then get this inside lit too, not just the sides. I'm getting all this. And if it's hot out, you're doing this outside and it's hot, you might have to reapply after you get one side on because it'll dry up. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for the the hole here that in the rim. Drop you just heard it go in there. Put the nut on just like this. And I only put it on about a third, fourth maybe of the way. And then at this point I'm gonna push push the tube out of the way, get the rim lock under the tire and feed it on just like that. Also gonna make sure the tube is the stem is in the tube, and see I've kind of pressed on, I'm about 
two thirds of the way on, you think, right over there? Something like so, that. So yeah. kind of got it about two thirds. Now these trials tires are pretty easy to install. I'm not going to pretend they're really hard. Um, and I just lift up with my left hand as I'm under here. Boom. Okay, so we're getting there. We've got one bite left. And my left hand is really helping me feed out. So now I'm going to get the tube, make sure it's all the way in here. And with that extra tube in there, it makes it a little bit more challenging. Now at this point, I like to flip it over and just double check that everything's okay over here. Looks good, looks good. Okay. Now I'm going to put it back. Okay, right here. Now I'm going to start just, just a little ways away from the rim lock. I'm going to put one spoon in, one spoon in, about three and a half, four inches apart, and then I'm going to drop in my bead buddy. And it's, see how far? We're not very far away from the valve stem. Rim lock I'm holding with my fingers. I pop it on just like that. Now with this extra tube here, we can stop and make sure that it's getting fed in. And when I pull it down, I'm kind of making sure that all that tube is getting in there. And I can pull it up again. Oh, when we cut those tubes, we just get a uh, cut out the core, the, the stem, cut out the stem, and then just cut it right around in the center of the inside. And that'll help prevent some punctures uh, from some pinch flats. Not going to help you on like a nail or anything. Okay, so my leg is going underneath. That's holding up on the tire. I got my foot on the tire stand. And I got this fast bite. And I'm not... You know what's funny? So that little bit right there is almost too small. I don't want to scratch my rim. So I'm actually going to pop it off a little bit. See that? And now I'm going to split this difference. I'm going to take about, about here, and that way I know I can get all of it last, rather than try to get that last bite the way it was set up for me. Now at this point, I can push the tire down to make sure that extra tube's all out of there, which it is. I can pull my bead buddy out. Now I'm going to pressure this thing up here. Here we go. Should get us a pop. Pop. Okay, I heard it on the bottom. And then I like to wipe it off, but I still am gonna go check the bottom. Wipe this all off, flip it over. Go like that. Now we're gonna tighten this rim lock. So we'll beat it up all the way. You wanna make sure that this bead is all the way up and it's even all the way around. If it's not, and you have a bunch of pressure in here, you could take the core out again and start over and try to beat it up again. If it's not beating up, then maybe you dried out with Maybe you could spray, you could spray a glass cleaner, something like that in there to try to get it to, to beat up. So you want to get this good and snug, just like that much right there. Okay. <laughs> Not too much. And then for pressure, on these tires, we run like 8 to 9 range. It's 52 right now. It's going to take a while, but if I let it out right, it'll be like a fan for me. Um, you want to check your tire pressure every time you ride. A lot of guys don't. It's important to do. You can lose a pound or more a week just sitting uh, in your garage. I'm going to leave this one probably around here. This I'm probably not going to use this for a while, so 15, 16. Okay, so I'm going to leave it right around there. And then, I'll, of course, I'll check it before I use it again. So cap goes on. Now this is really important. When you put the cap on, you want to just go down and have it, have the nut stop just like this. This is how it should look. 
and this is going to allow room for the tube to move. If you don't, then it'll tear. If you get if you get low on pressure, if you turn, you'll tear the stem right off of the tube. So you want to have that nut backed off just like that. Okay, so that's pretty simple, right? Hopefully that helps you out. Um, what do you think, Rado? Could you do it now? Yeah, I think so. We're going to do that sometime here soon. We're going to get uh, Rado beginner uh, tire changer. He's got some experience, but it's been a few years since he's done his own. He got I, I spoil him a bit, so hopefully that uh, helps these guys out, right? All right, that's all there is to it. We'll see you later.